I came from Florida through Philadelphia at WDAS. I worked for WDAS for three years. Mm -hmm. And while working for WDAS, I started coming to Wilmington to meet a friend that lived here, Bobby Deadwaller. Uh, so in looking for him, I met a couple of young ladies. I was a single young man. And uh, one of the young ladies got opened my nose or whatever you <laughs> want to call it. And I continued to come to Wilmington and coming to Wilmington and working out of Philadelphia, WDAS, WILM, was looking for a disc jockey, someone who had their own records and it could play uh, uh, music. Mm -hmm. So I met the description and, and, and interviewed and got the job. Uh, they had, Mitch Thomas was uh, doing a radio show and they had another man called Elijah Beckham. He was a blind man. Okay. But they hired me on Sunday morning and I got to be a little popular in the community, emceeing gospel programs, promoting gospel programs and all. So John Rollins, the millionaire who owned Rollins Cable Vision, uh, was trying to figure out a way to get African American to subscribe to cable. So they came to me being a little popular young man, uh, MC in programs and on the radio, and they made me an offer that I could not turn down. <laughs> uh, they would pay me three times as much as I was making at WILM. All right. So I took the job as a liaison between the cable company and the community. Okay. My job was to go around to the churches and advertise the importance of cable, the importance of getting a strong signal, mm -hmm. and you won't have all the snow in your television set. So I was blast for that. I mean, the ministers from the pulpit, everybody talked about I was trying to make the rich man richer and blah, blah. And I was blast and looked like I was about to lose my job. Mm. So I had to come up with some type of a concept. Okay. So they had a one channel studio at Ogletown and Chestnut Hill Road. They have widened that intersection now, but they, they had one hillbilly show on. Uh, during that time, the cable company requirements, you had to have one program a week in order to have a cable company in any development. So okay. they had Wednesday night, they had a one hour show on, one camera studio. No, no furniture or nothing, one camera studio. So uh, the hillbilly people would go down and play the country western music and they would tape it and put it out on the air. Right. So I, in, in losing my job, that's what I was doing. I, I yep. saw myself without a job and the young lady that I trained had took over my job at WILM. Right. So I had to figure out a way to survive. Yeah. So I talked uh, Mr. Rollins into letting me put a program on the air okay. that I may be able to advertise the events of the churches and the events of the community. It took me six months to convince them to do that. Okay. So they finally gave me a three month trial. Uh, it was a white fellow named Dave Corfin. He was in charge of getting the white people involved. I was in charge of getting the African Americans. So we started on a Monday night uh, two-hour program, and we had a hard time getting the churches and the choirs to participate mm -hmm. uh, because everybody was against the concept of me selling cable. They just wasn't buying cable. This was another bill, and what he's talking about, we getting three, six, and ten, although it's snowy, but you know, so it was a problem. Mm -hmm. So what we had to do when we first started off was to get groups out of Philadelphia and Washington. I had connection in Washington. I had a foster brother pastor there, so, and I made contact in Philadelphia. So we started off getting groups come in from Philadelphia and saying and all of that. Right. And then eventually uh, people started getting cable one or two and they started crowding in homes. And this is how it built up and one would tell the other. And, it took five years, and I want to make this plain, when people talk about how things start, it took five years to get that concept sold in Wilmington and Newcastle County. Mm. Now, we had to build that. Uh, once we started and people started subscribing, we had people like Gene Baylock of uh, Belvedere, outstanding singer, 
uh, another layer, Yvonne Burgess, uh, Jay Caldwell, uh, the deputy mayor, uh, 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 Ray Evans uh, played a big part. Uh, Reverend Calvin Jones participated. We, everything was live and we had to bring people in the same. We had one camera, right. one camera. And uh, I had to bring my furniture out of my house because we had no furniture. Gotcha. Uh, the camera was all taped up. It was falling to pieces. So this is how we started. <laughs> right. So after bringing groups in and advertising in the paper that these groups were going to be on on Monday night, then people started eventually subscribing to cable. Yeah. And we started doing church announcements free. I, at one time on Sunday, we would have 30, 35, 40 church announcements, what was going on in the community. So it did not start off at least access. It started off as public access mm -hmm. because it was used to get the African Americans to subscribe to cable. Wow. Now, as soon as that happened and we got a few sponsors and it started building up, that's when uh, they took another look at it and says, okay, uh, we can make some money out of this. Mm -hmm. So uh, eventually that's when it changed to from public access to lease access and they started charging people for coming on. Yeah. Before, if you had something worthwhile or something to benefit the community, you would come on. Yeah. So for, for about eight years, that's the way it happened. So eventually, we started getting sponsorship and all that. Mm -hmm. So eventually I broke off and uh, I didn't have a job anymore because uh, they went to lease access. Mm -hmm. So I saw the benefit of buying my own time. So I started buying my own time and, and developing my own program. Now, uh, a few years ago, we had this fight on trying to keep it live. Right. They wanted to take the live off. This wasn't the first time that happened. 20 years ago, 21 years ago, that happened. And it was a battle that I was fighting along with Sam Guy and uh, Theo Gregory and a few of us had fought this battle. So the, the new lapper now is the second lapper. It's not the first lapper. The first lapper happened about 20 years ago when uh, it was almost a one-man battle, me fighting the cable company, trying to keep it going and all of that. So yeah. there's a great history behind lease access. And finally now, under the new franchise agreement, it's going to be a takeover where it will remain live. Uh, Comcast is getting out of the business of live programming, and this is what they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. They didn't remind it remaining live, they just didn't want to operate a television station. Yeah. So now under the new contract, it will be a new uh, contract to run in uh, lease access under the new contract, so it will stay live and, and, and other things happen. Yeah. But there's a long history, a lot of work, a lot of headaches, that was put into getting it where it is now. So there are people who have celebrated now. They have a right to celebrate. This is a very important entity, mm -hmm. but it was a struggle to get it to where it is now. Yeah. And I was a direct part of that struggle. It was my concept from the very beginning. I still think lease access is good, but for 42 years I have been preaching uh, from this studio, studio, the importance of an education and a public channel. The difference is you pay for lease access for your time. The public and educational channel, you qualify. Mm -hmm. Now, to just make this short, the importance of an education and a public channel, which we now have an educational channel, uh, uh, channel 965, uh, Red Clay is responsible for that. I'm working with them. But the importance of a uh, channel, and it had been proven all over the nation, that we have a lot of positive things in our community. Yeah. We have a lot of young people doing positive things. Right. We have young people in schools doing positive things. Right. But no way for the community to see that. Right. So that's the importance of it. And, and also, I just want to interject that um, 
you know, two things can exist, uh, can coexist, and, and it's nothing but a benefit. Um, and, and as you mentioned, um, you know, the educational type uh, channel is so important because some, some parents and, and people don't have transportation to get to certain absolutely, events. Absolutely. Um, and our, God knows our community is definitely in need of uh, positive programming and, it, and our kids need to be exposed to opportunities to express their creativity and to have the opportunity to do it for no cost absolutely. at all um, is just an opportunity that we cannot miss. And, and I support that um, very strong uh, in supporting education because I benefit from the uh, education that I got within the city of Wilmington, um, you know, in particular, Mr. Maurice Pritchett, as you know, oh, yes. Um, yes. he is a part of my life. He's a part of my family. He's a part of In the Upper Rooms family. Um, he's definitely woven into the fabric of our community. Um, and so in, in addition to celebrating you tonight, I have to give a shout out to um, Mr. Pritchett. Yes. Um, because uh, a lot of people don't realize what you do behind the scenes without a camera rolling, what he yeah, does absolutely. behind the scene without absolutely. a camera rolling. Um, and I just think that it's the responsibility of those of us who are communicators and a, and a part of the media to be of service by um, you know, rewarding those people who have made their contributions. Because if we reward you, uh, Reverend Brown, tonight, there's a young person somewhere out there that um, sees that you know you can really be successful and you can be appreciated and they look at the difference that you have made and they have an opportunity to say yeah I want to be like